Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 
The text for our meditation this morning is written for us in Job chapter 1, verses 20 to 22, and I invite you to stand in the name of our Lord. Then Job stood up, tore his robe, and shaved his head. He fell to the ground and worshipped. Then he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will return. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be blessed. In all this, Job did not sin or blame God. Let us pray. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us through the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Please be seated. In Jesus the Christ, dear fellow redeemed, my children suffered their first significant loss this past summer. Our beloved dog of 14 years, Dozer, had to be put down. We found a vet that would come and administer the medicine in our our own home. So there we were, gathered in the family or their living room around Doza saying goodbye. Even for a tough Australian farm boy who knew he was only an animal, it was hard. The tears were flowing down everyone's faces as we say goodbye to an animal who had been with us so long and from whom we had so many memories. The loss was real. You may not have been able to see the the blood flowing like with a wound or the the purple mark of a bruise. But it was real. It hurt. It hurt inside, which is probably the, the worst form of pain that we can suffer. The loss was real. Now, sometimes we can see a loss coming, like with those, and we can sort of brace for it. At other times, it just catches us by surprise. It was that later form of loss that, that Job suffered. Four messengers came to Job, one after the other. The first came and said, an enemy has come and and taken away your, your donkeys and killed your servants. While that messenger was speaking, the second came and said, fire of God came down and, and burned up the sheep and your servants. While the second was still speaking, the third came and said that the Chaldeans have come. And taken away your camels and and killed your servants. And while he was still speaking, the fourth came. And here's the gut punch. Your kids are all dead. A wind blew the house down that they were gathered in. Only I survived. We're told that Job stood up, tore his garment, shaved his head, and then fell down to the ground and worshipped God. His pain was real. But his pain caused him to draw near to God. What have you lost? 
I don't doubt that some of you have gone through terrible and significant loss. All of us have gone through some type of it. And in the midst of that loss, we can often ask, why does God allow this to happen? Why does an almighty, all-powerful God allow bad things to happen? Why is he making me go through this? I think in many ways that's a natural question, right? That we know that God is all-powerful. We also know or trust that he loves us. So, so why? Why does he let these things happen? Surely a loving God would protect me from this pain. Well, it is true that God is loving and God is all-powerful, but God is also wise. God knows what is the truly best thing for us to go through. We don't understand and we don't enjoy the pain, so we want to run from it. But our loving and wise God truly knows what is good for us. And so he allows these things to happen to us. Now, our natural response to that question, why God, why? Is that there must be something in me. There must be something that I have done that has caused God to treat me this way. And if we're honest, there's lots of things within us that would cause God to not only allow pain to enter our lives, but actually to inflict pain in our lives. We have sinned against him in thought, word, and deed. From the moment we were conceived, we've rebelled against him and done what is evil in his eyes. And so comfort doesn't come from looking to ourselves. It has to be outside of us. And it is. It's in the painful cross of our Savior. In the cross of Jesus, God has proven that he is loving and wise. He has shown you what he is willing to do, the lengths that he is willing to go to, to work for your good. God himself came down from heaven and bore your sins on the cross. Everything that God should have been angry with you over, Every reason that God should inflict pain both now in time and hereafter in eternity, Jesus took on himself. Jesus suffered a painful death in your place, even going so far as to be separated from God. And he did that because he loves you. And God the Father transferred your guilt to him because God the Father loves you. And in his wisdom, this way is the best thing for you. That Jesus would suffer and die in your place. So God is wise and he is loving. So maybe the best question isn't to ask why God allows these things, but instead to ask the question, how am I going to respond to these things? Notice how Job responded. 
He had lost everything, even his own flesh and blood, his, his kids. If anyone had a, a reason to ask why, if anyone had a cause to be angry at God, Job certainly did. And yet, instead of asking why, he focused on how he would respond. He had received that news sitting down. News, I think, that would have made most of us fall to the ground. Yet our text says he stood up, a deliberate action. He, he rent his garments, he tore his clothes. He shaved his head. When we read this text, it's, we read it as if it all happened just like that. But this is deliberate action on Job's part. He took the time to shave his head. And then he deliberately bowed down to the ground. And he deliberately opened his mouth. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job was deliberate in his response. He didn't question God's actions. He kept trusting that God was both wise and loving. That God would continue to work for his good, even in the midst of this terrible suffering. So how will you respond to suffering? It's coming. You've already experienced it in some form or another. But Jesus promised in this world, you will have trouble. Don't doubt God. Instead, respond. Draw near to your wise and loving God in the midst of the pain and suffering of this life. And he will bless you. He will be with you and carry you safely to heaven's shore. May God grant us his spirit that we would have the same faith as Job and draw near to our God in suffering. To him be the glory now and forever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, because of sin, our world is full of, of trial, difficulty, and suffering. We thank you that you have promised to work all things for our good. We thank you that in love you sent Jesus to take away our sin so that we can know that you will wisely map out our lives and fulfill your promise to work everything for our good. In the midst of our sufferings, grant us your spirit that we would draw close to you and prevail through the suffering and come out stronger in our faith. Bless us to these ends, for Jesus' sake. Amen.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.